everyone, it's Charlie here. I hope you're well and doing good. Today's video is going to be my February book haul. Um, and I think it could quite possibly be the biggest book haul that I have ever done on my channel. Um, I have accumulated a lot of books since I did my last book haul. Um, but before I get into showing you the books, I wanted to have a quick chat with you guys because I realise it's been about five weeks now since I last uploaded a video and I kind of feel like it would be weird after all that time if I came back and I didn't at least try to explain where I've been a little bit. Um, you guys maybe haven't even noticed that I've been gone but I feel like I should just explain. Um, so basically January was just a really... Um, crappy crappy month for me it was one of those months where it felt like everything that could go wrong went wrong basically um particularly the latter half of january one of my very very best friends was involved in a really serious accident she's extremely lucky to be alive um so that was really scary it was one of those moments where you kind of realize how quickly things can go wrong and how quickly life can be changed um so that was really scary and i've had a lot of stuff going on with my work um which could basically mean that soon i will be unemployed um yeah i'm not going to talk too much about it though because that's just going to be boring for you guys um and as you guys also know i've been having a lot of dental stuff done um which unfortunately hasn't been going to plan so i've now had to be referred um to be partially put to sleep to have the rest of the stuff done which absolutely terrifies me um the last time i was put to sleep to have something done funny enough was to have four teeth removed when i was younger and uh when i came round i was so ill and ever since it's just terrified me the thought of being put to sleep so i am so like freaking out about that right now and just a combination of everything that's been going on my anxiety levels have been sky high um the last week in january was just it was horrendous i had that constant sick feeling in my tummy and I just I couldn't sleep I was struggling to eat it was just awful it's probably the worst that I've known my anxiety to be for a really long time and when I'm like that I can't focus on anything so I can't focus on filming videos or even even reading I struggle with um so yeah to be honest I just haven't even thought about filming which I know is bad of me but sometimes life just gets in the way and it certainly has been over the last few weeks um but I'm here now and I'm so excited to be back filming because I've really really missed it um and I've got so so many ideas for videos that I'm so excited um to get on with some things that don't necessarily focus all on books because having some time away has kind of made me realize that Although this will always be largely a book channel because that's, you know, my biggest passion. Um, I also want to talk about other stuff. Um, and yeah, just being away has given me time to think about new ideas for things I want to do. So I've got some very different things coming up, which I hope you will like, even though they're not necessarily book related. Um, as always, on any of my videos leave me some comments down below let me know if you've enjoyed that particular video if it's something you'd like to see more of all of that kind of thing um is really helpful for me um so yeah that boring bit out of the way as i said today's video is going to be my february book haul um, and as i also said i have accumulated a lot of books since i did my last book haul um when i'm feeling particularly stressed and anxious and i know you guys will be able to relate to this i buy books because that is what cheers me up and i've certainly been doing a lot a lot of that recently um and i have some absolutely incredible sounding books to share with you today so um without further ado i'm going to stop gabbing on and i'm going to get straight into showing you the books um, I'm going to start with some books that I have received for review and then I'm going to do manga and graphic novels and then I will do all of the other books. 
So let's get on with it. So the first two books that I received for review were very, very kindly sent to me from the author himself, who is just awesome. Um, and these are Kill River and Disco Death Trap by Cameron Rubick. I hope I've said that correctly. These covers are absolutely amazing. And these are supposed to be kind of like 80s slasher types of stories. And um, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about these and I was wondering how I could order them because they're not actually available here in the UK to buy. Um, and so I was speaking to Cameron on Twitter and he very, very kindly um, said that he would send me a couple of them. Um, and I said I would review them for a new series of horror videos that I've got coming up. I'll talk about them in another video. Um, and I'm just so excited to have them. I should say, though, even though they're not available in the UK, um, if you go on to Amazon.com, you can buy them and Cameron will ship them over here to you, um, which I just think is is amazing. Um, and I, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited for these. You guys know I love a good 80s slasher type of thing. So these are right up my street. Thank you so much, Cameron, for sending these my way. And then Hotkey Books sent me Big Bones by Laura Dockrill. This arc is absolutely amazing. I just love it. This will be the um, finished cover. But yeah, this arc, I just absolutely love it. And this is a YA contemporary about a girl called Bluebell who is also known as Big Bones, and it's kind of like her diary. Um, you guys know why contemporary is not usually my kind of thing, but I'm definitely on the lookout for more authors whose books I can love as much as non Pratt's, because she seems to be one of the only contemporary authors whose books I can just read every single one of and absolutely love. So hopefully, hopefully Laura Dockrill is going to do the same. I've heard some amazing things about this book, so I'm really, really looking forward to it. And this one comes out next month. Munger. Really been getting back into Munger um, this month. I don't know what happened, because last year, as I said, I think, in one of my videos, I really fell out of love with it. But um, I've just been... Yeah, I've just been really, really enjoying it lately. I think as my brain's been a bit all over the place, I've just found manga quite nice and easy to read. Um, so the first one that I picked up is I Love Halloween. Um, you guys know anything with Halloween and I am sold. And this is about a group of kids that go out on Halloween and they cause some havoc. Um, and I've heard it's really, like, gruesome. It says on the back, read it if you have a strong stomach and are just a little disturbed. Join the misadventures of a group of particularly disturbing trick-or-treaters as they go about their macabre business on Halloween night. That is just me uh, in a book. There is the artwork. Um, really looking forward to this one. And I found it pretty cheap on Amazon, so that's always good. Then I picked up volumes two and three of A Silent Voice. Um, Turnaround UK sent me volume one of A Silent Voice. I'll put the link down below to the manga unboxing I did from them. Um, and I read that well, like a couple of weeks ago now. Um, and I absolutely just loved it. So I had to get some more volumes. This is about a boy. I can never remember names from manga. I don't know why. Um, but this is about a boy called Shoya. And a girl called Shoko. And um, Shoko is deaf. And she starts at Shoya's school. And Shoya bullies her so badly that she has to move schools and when that happens everybody turns against him and a few years later um he decides that he needs to go and find her and try and make up for his past mistakes it is such a beautiful story of acceptance and how it's okay to be different and i have just been thoroughly thoroughly enjoying it i've actually read volume two now as well and i'm about to start volume three I'll just show you a little bit of the artwork um yeah just such a great series that i would highly highly recommend and then the last um volume of manga that i got is a terrified teacher at ghoul school by may my tanaka my tanaka i'm not sure how you say that um, and this is about a teacher who is transferred to a school that is full of monsters and you guys know i just love anything like this with monsters and ghosts and things and i just thought that this sounded really really cool 
I am so sorry if you can hear a lot of barking right now. That is my neighbour's dogs um, because the postman has just been and it literally sets off a Mexican wave of dog barking when the postman comes because there is a lot of dogs where I live. Um, so I do apologise for that. But yeah, anyway, this, um, um, this just sounds completely up my street and I cannot wait to read it. There is some of the artwork. I really like the artwork in this one. Um, so that is the manga that I picked up. Um, I also then picked up some single issue comics. I'm not really buying single issue comics anymore. Um, just the only time I'm buying them is if I want to try out a new series or if something is going to be a really small uh, amount of issues in the whole um, series. First I picked up issue one of Ice Cream Man. This is an anthology series. Um, so it's like a series of sort of creepy stories, but they're all linked together by this weird ice cream man, which I just thought sounded quite cool. Um, I'll just quickly show you the artwork of this one. I really like the artwork in this one. Um, and I just, yeah, I thought this just sounded quite interesting. Um, and I've heard a lot of amazing things about this one. Um, and the guy in the comic book shop I go to said it's been super popular as well. So I got that one. And then I picked up um, Hungry Ghosts by Anthony Bourdouin. Um, and this one, which is unusual for single issues, actually has a little description on the back of what it's about. It says, a circle of chefs gather to outscare each other with terrifying tales of fear and food from around the world as they play Hayaku Mon Monogatara Kadankai. Um, the game of 100 candles and pray they survive the night. So, you know, it's got the whole, like, um, Japan thing going on, the ghost thing, and that is my favourite thing in the world. Japan, ghosts, I'm sold, pretty much. So, that is that one. Um, <clears throat> then I picked up Stabity Bunny. Um, this is about a little girl who is abducted, um, but she is abducted with her favourite toy, which is this little bunny, who is actually a killer. Um, and the people that have abducted her don't realise this. Um, and this is supposed to be a bit of a weird, kind of dark, sort of, um, like, it says it's a children's story gone horribly wrong. Um, the artwork is amazing. Um, this is so hard to find though. I had to find it on eBay and it was quite expensive for a single issue. So I don't know if this is maybe not necessarily planned to come out in the U here in the UK. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'll buy any more volumes at the price I paid for this one anyway. Or issue, sorry. Um, and then the last one that I picked up I actually found in a charity shop. And I was freaking out when I found this. I could not believe it. And this is an X-Files comic. But the exciting thing about this is that it is based on the issue Squeeze. Which is my favourite episode of X-Files ever. Um, it's about a genetic mutant called um, Eugene Victor Toombs. Who can contort himself into the smallest of places. So even if you've locked your house from the inside. He can get through like air ducts and chimneys. And um, every 30 years he commits murders in order to steal the livers from humans. And then he goes into hibernation and he uses them as his sustenance in that hibernation time. I This was the first ever X-Files episode I watched and I remember it terrifying me. So as soon as I um, saw this in the charity shop I just had to have it. It's actually more like a graphic novel this one is put together. Um, I'll just show you. I'm just trying to look for... Um, here look, there's tombs down there, um, I'm so excited to have this. And then lastly, um, for this section of the haul, I picked up some full, um, graphic novel volumes. Um, so I got volume one of Death Head, um, which I just think has the most awesome cover. Um, and this is about a family that go on a camping trip. Um, and while they're there, they find this cursed mask. And it says that days later, haunting visions begin to lure 
Niall, who is the youngest son of this family, away from his family and towards a sinister mystery that could threaten the entire world. While Niall searches for answers, a plague doctor, an ancient harbinger of death, appears in his hometown to kill the family. In this infectious story about trying to outrun the demons living inside of us, the Burtons discover that masks only cover the truth that lies beneath. This, to me, just sounds so good and i've heard i um watched the review on youtube and someone was saying that there's like ghosts in it and it's just a really um fantastic horror graphic novel um the artwork is really nice i really like sort of bold quite colorful um artwork i'm really looking forward to this one. i think it sounds brilliant um, and before I watched the video where someone was talking about this, I'd never heard of it before. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to that one. I also picked up volume one of Kim Reaper. Um, this is about a young girl called um, Kim, obviously, um, who is a normal university student. Apart from the fact that she is also a grim reaper. Um, and I've actually already read this one and it was really fun and cute and yeah i i really enjoyed it It was a nice bit of a sort of light read um so yeah i would definitely recommend this one if you're wanting something kind of light and quick to go through and then i picked up volumes one two and three of postal so originally i only picked up volume one but i read it and i loved it so much that I just had to have more volumes of it. I think, no, I don't think I know this is one of my new favourite graphic novel series. It is set in a little town called Eden um, in Wyoming. I hope I've said that right. Um, and everybody that lives in Eden is a criminal of some description. And they live here to kind of stay hidden from the government so they can sort of restart their lives um, again and they live by a very strict set of rules so even though it's a bunch of criminals living in this town no crimes really are committed and if somebody does commit a crime they are killed um, and I'm not going to talk about volumes two and three very much obviously um, but in volume one the body of a young girl is found and our main character is a young boy called Mark who has Asperger's um, so he sees little details in things that Ne not everybody would um, and so he becomes sort of obsessed with finding out who this girl um, was and what happened to her and in doing so he sort of unleashes um, all these secrets from people that live in Eden including his own mother who is the mayor she's like in charge of the town um, and that sort of opens up all the stories for the other volumes and we meet kind of other characters and we hear sort of how they came to be in Eden and oh my god it is so good I cannot recommend this series enough Mark as a main um character is just I just love him so much he's so sweet and it's really interesting to read a book from the point of view of someone who has Asperger's um because I don't really know much about that as a condition um, so just to sort of see how they see the world is really interesting and I just, I absolutely love it. If you're a fan of crime stuff with a sort of like Stephen King type of town thrown into it, then you'll really, really enjoy this series. I highly recommend it. Okay, so now on to the biggest part of the haul and this is just all of the normal novels that I have bought. So... Um, the first um, things that I got are some of the new um, Penguin Modern books. So these are a collection of 50 books that Penguin have brought out. They're just like super short little um, essays and poetry and tiny little stories. Um, they are all £1 each, which is just amazing. And um, I just couldn't resist having some because they are all so beautiful and they look so nice all together i just want to get them all now um so the ones that i picked up are the missing girl by shirley jackson um the finger by william s burroughs um investigations of a dog by franz kafka um akutagawa and others three japanese short stories um the black ball by ralph ellison 
uh, The Garden of Forking Paths by Georges Louis Borges. I probably completely butchered that name. Um, and The Skeleton's Holiday by Leonora Carrington. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading these, and as I said, I want to get the um, full set now. I would definitely recommend checking these out. They've got some fantastic titles in them. So, yes, I got those ones. Then I then I picked up The Breaking Point by Daphne du Maurier. I have never read any of her books before. Um, one of my dad's favourite, favourite um, stories and films is Don't Look Now, which she wrote. Um, and I remember watching the film of that quite a few years ago and I hated it. I was so bored. And I think that kind of put me off um, buying anything else of hers, to be honest. Um, but I saw this one and I just thought it sounded really good. It's a collection of short stories um, about um, people kind of reaching breaking point. Um, and the first story, which I started to read, is about a guy who has this kind of um, mental breakdown and he decides that he wants to murder somebody. Um, so... And from what I read of that story, I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is going to show me a different side um, to her books. And I'm going to like it more than Don't Look Now. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, I picked up that one. <clears throat> then I picked up Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernard. Um, this is another YA contemporary type of book. And it's about a girl who's... Um, uh, her best friend runs away with their teacher, but nobody apart from Eden knows where her best friend has gone and she's being like interviewed by the police, but she's trying to like, um, she's trying to like keep her friendship by sort of just pretending that she doesn't know where her friend is either. And I just, I'm really intrigued with books that feature a student-teacher relationship, which probably makes me sound incredibly weird. Um, but I don't know, I just, I have this fascination with reading books that involve that. Um, it's just a subject that I find kind of very interesting. Again, I know that probably makes me sound incredibly weird. Um, but yeah, so I just, I had to pick this one up as soon as I heard about it. Um, yes, and it's a really nice cover as well, nice and shiny. Um, then I picked up a book that I've been wanting to read for a really long time and I've heard amazing things about, and this is Unsub by Meg Gardiner. Um, this is a kind of like crime thriller. It's about a woman called Caitlin who, um, is a narcotics detective. Um, but she's asked to hunt a killer called The Prophet. Um, basically each of the books in this series have a serial killer and that serial killer is based on a serial killer in real life. So this one is based on the Zodiac Killer. The, the Zodiac Killer, is that what he was called? The Zodiac. You guys will know what I mean. Um, and then the second book which has just come out is based on Ted Bundy. Um, and I just really like the idea. You guys know that's exactly my kind of thing. So I'm really looking forward to reading this now. I finally have my hands on a copy. The next book that I picked up is Anything You Do Say by Gillian McAllister. This is one of my most anticipated reads of this year. Um, basically it's about this woman who is um, walking home after a night out and she is approached by this guy. He's basically chasing her. And she turns around and pushes him and he falls down the stairs. And um, it's basically about, like, what would you do? So would you call 999 or would you run and leave him there? And the book is told in alternating chapters. One of them from the point of view of if she'd run 999. And one of them from the point of view of if she'd just run and stayed... Um, silent um and i just think this sounds absolutely fantastic what a great idea for a thriller i'm definitely gonna um read this one soon because this this to me just 
yeah, it just sounds absolutely fantastic. So that is that one. Next book that I picked up is a book that has been recommended to me so many times and I've just never got around to picking it up um, until now. And it is Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haar. So this is a YA thriller and it's about some friends that go on a spring break trip to Aruba. Yeah, Aruba. And our main characters are Anna and her best friend Elise. Elise is found murdered and Anna becomes the prime suspect. This book is supposedly absolutely fantastic and I can't wait to see what the fuss is about. Um, it definitely sounds like something I'm going to really enjoy um, and it's got like um, phone call transcripts and like newspaper things and those are my favourite types of books to read when they have lots of little different bits of mixed media in them so yes. Then I picked up Hydra by Matt Wazowski. This is the second book in the Six Stories uh, podcast um, series. I haven't read the first one. You don't really need to. You can read them all as a standalone. But it focuses around a guy who runs a podcast called... Um, six stories and in this one uh, it says on the front a family massacre a deluded murderess five witnesses six stories which one is true so it's about a woman who was accused of murdering her family and she is now in a mental health institution um but and she's never really spoken to anyone about it but she says that she'll speak to the guy that runs his podcast and so he starts kind of interviewing people um that were involved in this case in some way and it sounds bloody fantastic and I can't wait to read this I've got so many good books here I just don't even know where to start I just want to read them all um so that's that one um, kind of along the same vein, podcast-wise, I bought Are You Sleeping by Kathleen Barber. Um, and this is, it says, when a family man is killed at point-blank range in his home, it shakes a sleepy town to its core. The murder is a strange, horrifying crime, but for the authorities, it is an open and shut case. Ten years on, the victim's daughter, Josie, has started afresh in New York. Far from the tragic events, events, events that blew her family apart, no one knows the truth about her previous life, not even her fiancé. Investigative journalist Poppy is convinced the wrong man is in jail for the murder, and she's determined to prove it. What starts off as a true crime podcast snowballs into a national phenomenon. Everyone has an opinion, but who is telling the truth? Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much obsessed with true crime podcasts at the moment, and I'm loving this whole wave of podcast-type books that are coming out. It's just such a great idea, and I will be buying every single one of them. So yeah, looking forward to that one. Then I picked up Kill Creek by Scott Thomas, which firstly is an amazingly well-put-together book. Um, so that's the cover. It's got decal edges, which is one of my favourite things in the world um, on a book. I wish more books had that. And then that is the back. And this is about four horror authors who are invited to spend the night at one of the world's most notorious haunted houses. Um, I have already read this and it is safe to say it's one of the best horror books that I have ever read. It truly delivers the scares that it says it's going to, which I find a lot of horror books don't. So if you are a horror fan, then I would highly, highly recommend picking this one up and having it in your um, collection. It was just so good. I'm definitely going to reread it again for Halloween because I think it would be absolutely perfect for that. Um, and I think what I quite liked about it is that it's sort of like, it has kind of like a subtle build up. So there's always this atmosphere, even when creepy things aren't really happening there's just this atmosphere like you know something bad is going to happen um so yeah just a really really great book uh then i picked up a couple of non-fiction books because i've been i'm still loving non-fiction at the moment the first one is lifers by um jeffrey wansell is my camera focusing yeah um and this is inside the minds of britain's most notorious criminals this is just my kind of thing in a book. Um, so it says, um, what makes a killer? Why did they take a life? And should we lock them away for life? This is a book about murder. 
It is a look inside the minds of the world's most dangerous criminals and it asks the most crucial questions about what made them do it and whether they can ever change. It is the story of Jeremy Bamber, Joanna Dennehy, um, Ian Huntley um, and many others in jails up and down the country. In this shocking, chilling and powerful book, Jeffrey Wansell explores the minds of these lifers, revealing who they are, why they did it and whether they feel any remorse for what they have done. This is just everything that I enjoy reading, really. Um, you guys know I was a criminology student, so I love the whole getting into the mind of people like this. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. And the other non-fiction book that I picked up is The Sleep of Reason by David James Smith. And this is a book that revolves around the case of James... Um, Bolger. Um, now I know that if you're in the UK you will have heard of James Bolger. Um, even if you don't necessarily know the case very well you would have heard that name. Um, but for those of you in other countries who may not have, although I'm sure even a lot of you will have heard of James Bolger, um, he was a little boy, he was two years old back in 1993 um, and he was at a shopping mall with his mum um, and they'd gone into a butcher's and she let go of his hand for a matter of seconds to get her purse out and when she turned around James was gone but what makes this case so shocking and so memorable for people is that it transpired that he had been taken by two 10 year old boys just children themselves and he had been subjected to the most horrific of violence um, and then they left him on a train track where he was hit by a train and killed um, and his body was found I think it was like two days later um, and I just I mean I remember I've seen James's mum um, be interviewed quite a few times and she said you know when you have children or when you're younger you're told to watch out for strange men and things like that but you're never told to watch out for other children you never think that other children could even contemplate something like that let alone carry it out and there's this really kind of famous bit of cctv footage where you see james being led out of the shopping center by the two boys and she said that when she saw that she actually kind of like she had this feeling of hope because she just thought, oh, they're with other children. They're gonna, be, he's gonna be okay. Um, and so it's just completely shocking to think that two children who actually planned to do something like this um, went ahead and carried it out. I mean, it's just horrific. Um, and this is basically about um, what could cause two children to behave in this way and it sort of goes back to the beginning of the story and what happened that day and um, what happened afterwards and the kind of legacy that has been left behind by this case and I just this is a case that really just it really interests me I'm just like I said I'm really interested to know what could make two children act out this horrific thing so as soon as I saw this book I just I had to pick it up um so yeah I'm I was going to say looking forward to reading this one but I think that's the wrong words to use really um but yeah then I picked up The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes I showed this in my December book haul I think it was but I had the UK edition. If you watched that video, you would have heard me say how much I hate the UK edition of it. So I went onto the book depository and I ordered the US edition, which is so much nicer. Um, and this is about a girl called Cassie, who um, is approached by the FBI um, to work with them on their program that uses exceptional teenagers to close infamous cold cases. And she... Um, I think it becomes like a profiler and um, it says it is um, criminal minds for the YA world and I love criminal minds so this is just like a no-brainer book for me and I'm definitely gonna um, read this one very soon now I have a more decent edition of it. 
Um, <clears throat> then I picked up two books from the charity shop and I could not believe how lucky I was to find these books because they're both books that I've wanted to read for a really long time and I paid two pounds for both of them and they're both in fantastic condition it barely looks like they've been read um so the first one is meddling kids by edgar cantero um this one is a kind of scooby-doo type of book so it's about a group of kids in the summer of 1977 um or it starts in 19, 1977 uh, where a group of kids solve their final mystery and unmask the elusive Sleepy Lake monster. Um, and then it goes forward to 1990 where these group of kids um, come back together because they are haunted by disturbing memories of their final night in an old haunted house. Um, and I just, I was a big fan of Scooby-Doo growing up so as I said, this is a book I've wanted for a really long time because I just think it sounds like it's going to be great fun. The cover is just insane. And look at the condition of this. I mean, it's just, it's amazing for a pound. I'm like, I was so happy with that. Um, and the other one I picked up is The Ruins by Scott Smith. Again, as I said, another book that I've wanted to read for a really long time. It is another book with deckled edges. Deckled edges for the win. Um, and this is about some friends who it says go off on a beach holiday together in Mexico um they go off with a new found friends in search of one of their group who has gone off to pursue a girl and they find themselves in the Mayan ruins um and it says this is what happens from the moment when the searchers moving into the wild interior begin to suspect that there is an insidious horrific other among them um every time i watch a horror recommendations video this book is mentioned um which is why it's been on my wish list for a really long time but i've only ever been able to find mass market paperbacks of it and i hate mass market paperbacks hate them um so as soon as i saw it in hardback again for a pound i just couldn't not have it so i'm really um glad to have this in my collection now um, the next book is one of my most anticipated reads of this year and it isn't actually out here in the UK yet but little tip if you're in the UK and there's a book that you're wanting that isn't quite out yet go and have a look on the book depository because often they have them sooner um, than they are actually released um, I think because they have like um, they sort of do a lot of importing of books so if it's like out in another country, they have it available to buy here. Um, and so as soon as I saw this on there, I was like, yeah, yeah, I've got to have that. And it is Mr. Tender's Girl by Carter Wilson. And this is a adult psychological thriller. And it is based on a true story um, where, if I remember rightly, it was in America. And two uh, young girls attacked their classmate as a sacrifice to the slender man so it's kind of um a take on the, the slender man story um and this is about a girl called alice and when she was 14 she was attacked by two of her classmates as a sacrifice for mr tender mr tender is a character that her dad made up in his best-selling graphic novel series um and then it sort of fast forwards to a decade later um, when this girl has changed her name and she's kind of trying to re rebuild her life really still but it says um, she can try to escape her past but Mr Tender is never far behind he will come with a smile that seduces and a dark whisper in the ear inspired by a true story this gripping thriller plunges you into a world of haunting memories and unseen threats leaving you guessing until the harrowing end. Um, I am so flipping excited for this book. I think it sounds absolutely fantastic. And oh, my camera's gone out, folks, there we go. I think it sounds absolutely fantastic and I am definitely going to be picking this one up very, 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 very soon. Um, I love the cover as well. I think it's really cool. Um, there we go. Um, oh yeah, on the back it says, how far are you willing to go for Mr. Tender? That's like the tagline. Yeah, really excited for that one. 
Um, okay, so we're on to the last two books now. I apologise for how long this video has been. Um, so I got Corpse Cold by Brahel and Sullivan. Uh, this is a collection of new American folklore short creepy stories with... Um, let me just... Illustrations. Creepy illustrations. I have been hearing about this book everywhere recently and um, every time I've heard it spoken about people have compared it to the creepy stories to tell in the dark books so um, at the same time as I picked this one up I also picked up the scary stories to tell in the dark box set so this has all three books in it and it's the original editions with the original artwork as well um, so scary stories to tell in the dark uh, more scary stories to tell in the dark the picture on the front of that is so creepy and um, Scary stories three more tales to chill your bones the illustrations in these I've never seen these before I know a lot of people read these when they were a kid. I've never seen them. The illustrations in these are flipping scary considering these are aimed at kids like they are they are freaky really really freaky let me just see if i can find um another one that i could let's have a look at some in the other books as well so um okay look at that one um they are really spooky i'm so excited i'm so excited i'm like a big kid when it comes to books like this i just i just grew up like reading stuff like this i can't believe that i never actually read these as a kid um but i'm so excited to have them in my collection now and i'm definitely gonna read through them all very 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 soon so that's it that is my huge february book haul i really hope you enjoyed it and you got some inspiration for new books to pick up as always let me know down below what new books you have bought this month and i'll see you all very soon for another video Bye.